we are going to discuss the placement of a worn spring on an arch wire. And the armamentarium for this is just a light wire plier and then a, a three prong, excuse me, a bird beak plier, which is a 139 or a flat on round, and then worn springs and a 19 by 25 arch wire. The worn springs come in a different package today. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily trust that part number that's on there, but <clears throat> you could just type in worn springs in the search engine for in SmileStream for the parts. And they come 10 in a bag, and I believe they're around $50. And since the advent of the IP bracket that happened in 2003 with the high torque brackets, uh, the worn springs aren't used very often anymore, but occasionally you're going to get a case where there's just one tooth that's severely has a torque problem, and a Warren spring is an excellent solution for that. So like I said, it's, it's used very infrequently, but when it's needed, it's really a nice thing to use. It's way better than trying to cause a twist in the arch wire because 19 by 25 is way too strong, and it's not a, an effective torquing arch, if you will. This, is, this works much better because it has such a longer lever arm than your twist in the wire. So let me show you what a Warren spring looks like in detail. And I will pick it up here with the plier. I don't want two, I just want one. And you can see this will fit around a bracket and it's got a little hole in it that's gonna go, a little hole in it that's gonna go, the wire's gonna go through that. And let me show you that up here in detail. And I hope you can see that, yeah, there you go, perfect. One side is going to get wound tighter, and the other side would get wound more loosely. So the first one you can insert on the arch wire without concern, because if it's incorrect, you can just turn the arch wire over. But the second worn spring you put on must be inserted the correct way. So what I'm going to do now is the insertion of the wire, excuse me, the worn spring on the wire. And I have taken a 19 by 25 arch wire, and when these come out of the package, Many times you'll have a burr on the end of it, and you can feel that on one end or the other. And what I've done is I rounded this off with a green stone, and then you can see that right here, that uh, it has like a little rounded end to it, and the same thing on that side. So we'll just try one side and see how that well that works. This is going to be more difficult than you would expect to get this uh, orange spring on that arch wire. And so you have to put the wire in the hole. And as I said, it's kind of tricky when it's got a little burr on the end of it. There. So you can see here, I've got that inserted partially on there. And we're going to engage the other side to slide this around. And now I have both sides on. And now I need it over here at the central incisor, so I'm going to slide it all the way around the arch wire. And this is why I have the light wire plier out there. Many times this is really hard to do, so I can hold the wire with the light wire plier, and then I can slide the warrant spring around much easier. I'll go like a little bit at a time until I get it in the central incisor position. has to fit that tightly around the wire so that that little helix I showed you doesn't spin. And these things come in 18 by 25 as well as 19 by 25. And in our POS system, we do mechanics on 19 by 25. So that's how we have established that's the warrant spring that we stock. The 18 by 25 heat wire could be used, but normally this is done on a 19 by 25. So now I have the the worn spring right where it would go on the arch for a central incisor. And now let's look at the windings in more detail here. I hope I have good enough light to show you that. And then here in this position, I'm hoping that you can see, oh, there you go. I'm hoping that you can see if I push that spring up against the central incisor crown, that the windings would be winding tighter and not looser. And I've got this upside down, so let's turn it over. And now, can you see, especially on this aspect down here, 
if I pick this up and I push this against the central incisor, the coil is going to be winding tighter and not looser. So if I have it upside down and I press this, excuse me, up against the central incisor tooth, and then what's going to happen, the coil is going to unwind and it will sometimes slip on the arch wire. So that's your first one. Now the second one has to go on in the same fashion. And for the installation of this, you slide the arch wire through the molar tubes and everything. And then when you get to the central incisor, you're going to pick this up and pick this up and then wind it up and push this against the central incisor. And it has a tremendous amount of force when you do that. So it's going to want to push the wire out of the slot. So this must be steel tied on each individual tooth. And if you're smart, you will also lace very tightly three to three or six to six to keep the crown in the same place. And remember, doctors, you want the root to move back and not the crown to move forward. This auxiliary is meant to make lingual root torque in a tooth. So that's the same as buckle crown torque. That's what the tooth would feel. So the lacing is necessary to make the root go back and not the crown go forward. All right, so <clears throat> the first one you do is a little bit daunting in there. And you can sometimes mount them upside down, you can put them on a lateral, you can put them on a cuspid, but many times you have to modify them to do that. As, they're, as they come right out of the package, they are pretty straightforward to use on a central incisor and they will cause lingual root torque on the tooth. So I hope that's been helpful and remember it's going to wind tighter, I, perfect, it's going to wind tighter here if you start to install it and then if it's upside down it's going to get unwound instead of wound. So I'm looking through the back of the camera so it's a little tough for me to see that but you folks will be able to see better. All right so that is about the end of the presentation so thanks for watching I hope that was helpful.